Uh, first of all, my name is Roy Bursar. I grew up in Seattle, Washington. Mr. Jab Nash. What's up, brother? What's up? What's up? How you doing? <laughs> my name is Kylie Hampton. I also go by Killa or Kai. I am, or I was born and raised here in Seattle, really Renton, Washington. I end up, me and my four younger siblings end up moving in with my dad's mom. What's up, family? Welcome to another episode of Talk of the Town, where we'll be highlighting, promoting, and preserving Black legacies within various industries via sports, business, and entertainment through inspirational digital storytelling and community building. Today, we have a special guest here with us, BJ or Brayon Blake. Welcome to the show. Yes, sir. Thank it's you. It's a pleasure to have it. you um, on right now. Thank you for coming out. Yes, sir. Appreciate it, Jeff. You know that. I yeah, got man. You, so, um, <laughs> I'm going to start it off with this right here, man. Um, you hear the term A1 since day one. <laughs> Man, uh, <clears throat> I want to talk about our relationship and how uh, whenever we meet, man, it's, it's it's like we reunite. You yeah. know what I mean? You've really been solid, man, yeah. since since we met right. uh, from high school to college. Um, me going to MIA so I can finish my bachelor's. Right. Uh, you know what I mean? I've still been locked in. And, and of course, with the help of social media, um, we've been able to uh, stay in contact. And we right. got each other's phone numbers. But, right. Um, that's a lot. Um, but... Uh, as we get older, it's easy to, to, to lose contact with people, um, but we're connected like the bottom V. Absolutely. Uh, we're connected at the bottom like the letter V. Excuse Absolutely. me. Um, I know what you meant. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm trying to throw that nip quote in there. Um, but man, uh, tell us why you even came out. Why, 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 why us? Why, why, why be a part of, of this this journey that we're going on with the podcast? Yeah, man? That's, a, that's a great first question to ask. You know, um, first of all, let me give you your flowers, bro. You know, as a black man in this world today, you know, I like to give you your flowers up front. You know, I really enjoy that. You feel what I'm saying? Yep. Um, shit, man, since we met the first day, bro, I can't even remember uh, the first day we met type shit, yeah, but nah, nah. like literally, man, I was I was in Idaho, yeah. at Moscow, Pullman's right there. My boy Jav, like we both from the six, both graduated from Garfield. Like, yep, yep. that's my dog. Like, I got you, you know what I mean? Yeah, so. Yeah easy when you call me or you, you text me and said b i need you to come out i got you you know what i'm saying like bro for you you was the light in my journey you know because you were so uplifting to you and pops you know i would come over there talk to pops and just i'm getting game i'm soaking it up you know i didn't understand it i didn't understand it at that time but you know as we go as we get older and we go on our journey i started to understand that you know, it was like, damn, man, like, Jab, he, that's a great dude. You know what I'm saying? And, and you know, I congratulate you for your your, your queen, man, your little one, yeah, man. You yeah, know, that's yeah. that's a blessing, man. <laughs> you know, so, I, you know, it was easy. It was a layup for me. Um, I don't really get out here and do podcasts, not to say, like, you know, I'm so big of a guy or whatever, but, you know, I do got a, a crazy story, and I, I was like, no no other platform, I'll give it to my bro for sure. Appreciate you, bro. Yeah, no doubt. Yeah. Um. <clears throat> so... To give the people who are watching at home a background of who you are, yeah. uh, kind of go over uh, your not only your sports background, but like, uh, you know, who is BJ as far as like Seattle is considered, like yeah. education, yeah. Uh, sports, family. Yeah. How did you move up here? Were you born up here? Yeah. Like, just kind of give people an overview of who you nah, are. So, yeah, I was uh, I was born, born and raised here, uh, like halfway raised here. So I was born. It's kind of crazy story. Uh, my mom tell me all the time. She was like, I was born on the side of the road. I came out early in the ambulance. <laughs> so she's like, you my special son. Like she always say that. Um, but yeah, graduated or not graduated, grew up here, uh, went to Hawthorne, went to Graham Hill and, you know, during some hardships in that time, I'm, I'm bad with ages, but around that middle school time, uh, we left down to New Orleans and Baton Rouge. That's where a lot of my family's at. You know, so I got like a big countryside of me, you know, that a lot of people don't get to see, you know, fishing so, and horseback oh, yeah, riding. Yeah, and... horses, all that, <laughs> all that. We got land, we got cattle in the back, we selling hay. Yeah. When I go down there, I'm really in my cowboy. Like, I, and I love that, you know, so I'm glad because I got a chance to go see my roots, you know, go, go see my peoples, you know, my grandmother, my aunties. We got a big family. My, my great grandmother, she had 10 kids. You know, so my, my, my grandpa, he got, what, four sisters, five brothers. You know what I mean? Yeah. So it's a it's, it's a big family. And, you know, family reunions down in Baton Rouge. Uh, my uncle, he's actually famous, Doug Williams, first black quarterback to win MVP. Redskins, Washington Redskins, that's my uncle. That's family. You know, that's bloodline. So 
Um, a lot of people don't really know that I'm really like a country guy at heart. Yeah. Like I really like my time to myself. Like, um, you know, I envision myself having my own land and, you know, my own property and doing whatever I want. You know what I mean? And generational wealth for my little ones when I do have it, you know? Um, but yeah, so we moved out to New Orleans, um, to Baton Rouge, stayed out there for a few years. This was like after Katrina. And that was a whole nother, you know, aspect of me seeing that at a young age, you know, seeing how the city is just, they still haven't cleaned up the city or anything, you know? Um, you know, as a kid, I was just accustomed, accustomed to death, like with my family, with my close friends, like really just super accustomed to it, you know? Um, and down South, you know, a lot of, of the elders, they kind of get a little sick and they pass away. So, um, you know, my auntie, she passed on me and that was my lady, you know, she had me in the choir. She had me in church every, every Sunday. She was the pastor. Like I was singing everything, you know, my, aunt, my aunt lady, my aunt doll, you know, them is my queen. So, uh, it took a lot for me. I got an older sister and an older brother. That's who all traveled down to New Orleans with me and my moms. I was the youngest. They left me. I'm there by myself with my cousin DJ. And I'm nice in sports at this at this time. Like I'm I'm football, straight collard greens and cornbread. It's like <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like I'm football. Oh, yeah. I'm football. So I was nice in football. But I knew basketball always had my heart. So you, you know, were playing both. I was playing baseball, track. Everything. I, 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 did everything. Right, right. I did everything. I did everything, bro. So um once I figured out that basketball was my calling, yeah. I knew I had to come back home, you know, cause there's nothing like hoops in the six, you know what I'm saying? So I came home, um, like we were talking about earlier, I stayed in like a, a foster care house with my, with my uncle. I call him my uncle. He's a great friend of the family, Marcus Harden. Shout out to him. Shout out to Marcus. You know, he's a big, big pivotal piece in Seattle with the, with the education, yes. with the, the kids that's having the hardship, man, that guy, man, Gave me a, a another view at life, you know. So I thank him for even taking me in. But that was hard. I was a freshman, man. I'm staying with with seniors and juniors. You know, they they got the house. I don't know what to do. You know what I'm saying? I'm, I'm by myself at the time. I don't know my dad at this time. I know him, but we don't have a, a good relationship. Um, you know, it was a lot. So uh, he had me go to Cleveland High School. Um, the thing when I start to talk, I'm a rumble because. Like, as I talk about it, it starts to just pop up. You yeah, know, yeah, I have yeah. a therapist, so I literally do this in therapy. Like, yeah. and it starts to just come up stuff I just buried a while ago, right. you know? So, um, at Cleveland, you know, it was, it was fine. I was good in basketball. Like, I was doing my thing, but I wasn't happy, you know? And I seen my best friends, my, my childhood friends, Deshaun and Delando, uh, Tucker, rest in peace to Big Herm. And, uh, you know, he was a huge piece of me transferring the federal way. And he was like, man, we're going to get you right with your dad. He knew my dad. Tried to stay with him. Things didn't work out. So now at this point, I'm kind of growing. Not kind of by him because I'm in a hardship. I'm, I'm sleeping from place to place. Couch surfing. Couch surfing. Um, shit. Not even sleeping some nights. You know what I mean? So, but I'm getting to school. I'm getting to practice. I'm getting, I had to catch the A-line from SeaTac from my brother's house on the floor. A-line all the way last stop all the way to federal way to the last stop yeah. to go to school. You feel me? So, um, just hardships, bro. And once I, uh, once I figured it out after my junior year, you know, I was like, man, you know, I want to do what I want to do the whole time. I wanted to go to Garfield. Like that was before, that. before I don't mean to cut you off. Yeah. <clears throat> so you went to Cleveland your freshman year. Yeah. And then your sophomore year, you were still at Cleveland? Sophomore and junior year, I was at Fed. Fed. Yeah. And, and Halfway of junior year, actually. I tra I left halfway of junior year. Okay. And where'd you go after that? I took, like, the break off until school ended. And then I went to Garfield. I transferred to Garfield. Okay. At so, that time, like, I was with B-Roy and all them. And, uh, you know, they took me under their wing. And they really helped me out a lot. Yeah. You know, yep. so... And you already had a relationship with them before? Yeah. So I knew Lardell. Uh, Lardell. I knew him from a while before that. And, you know, like Alonzo and Tremaine, uh, we all had, they all knew who we were, was in the city, mm -hmm. you know, and uh was crazy. We were all just got done hooping. We pull up to B's house and B sees me. He's like, bro, we got to get you out here. Like, as soon as he said that, I was like, man, I already wanted to go to Garfield. Yeah. Like, thank you. You know, so that was easy. And then shit, went to Garfield and, and made history, man. Won state championship in 2014. 
And I would say Garfield changed my life, you know? So, that so. gave me a different aspect on things, you know? Your last year of high school, bro, you went out with a bang. Yeah. One state, like you just said. Yeah. Um, and in and, and, and the interview that I watched, you yeah. know, I was doing my research and all that. <laughs> For sure. I, I, I dug up some some old uh, clips of, of <clears throat> that state championship uh, when we were seniors and we won state. Well, y'all won state. Right, shit, uh, we too. You we, was there yeah, too. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I wasn't <laughs> yeah. on the team, but but I was a part of the school. So, right, right. Um, we won state. And uh, when I watched the video, um, you, you were talking about some of the things you're saying now, like how you always wanted to even go to Garfield yeah. and, and you you know the the legacy with Joyce Walker, yeah. with B Roy, with Tone, Tony yeah. Roden, uh, um, Will Shirley Conroy. Walker, yeah, Will, Shirley. Will Conroy. Um, I mean the the list, list goes can on. go because it's outside of sports too. I think Bruce Harrell, the mayor, yeah, Garfield, absolutely. So absolutely, it, it 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 can get deep. But talk about why you even want to go to Garfield because I mean yeah, that's a great question. There's a lot of high schools you can go to in 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 uh the city, yeah. but why Garfield? And also to live up to that legacy that mm -hmm. it has. Mm -hmm. It's different. You know, a lot of people ask me this because I grew up in the South and in the Seattle. You know, that's where a lot of my ties are. That's where my family is at. Um, you know, but I was a little bit everywhere. I grew up South and West, CD, you know, everywhere. So, obviously, people was like, B, why are you not going to beach? You know, shout out Mike Bathia. They always wanted me to come there, you know, respectful. Um, you know, Coach Dave King, Big big JC, them is my big bros. So, you know, they, they always wanted me to come out there. Same time, I got Haskins at Garfield knocking on my door telling me to come too. You know, and at this time, I'm, I know Tucker, um, you know, Tucker. Tucker um, yeah, Tucker Heyman, uh, Stelly, Rajon Stelly, uh, Kai Green, like all these guys, they're all playing at this time. You know, Day Day, of course, Tone, uh, Glenn Brooks. I'm just watching the team. I'm like, damn, I can fit over there. Like, that's my type of play, you know. And the way that Tone was just taking over, the, like, the whole world. world you know man. what I mean? He was number world. one out of Seattle. Like, to see that would – Eyes open, and, you know, right then and there. At the same time, you got the twins, Hakeem and Kadeem, or not Hakeem, um, Roger, Roger, Roger and Lodric. Yeah. You got the twins at beach. So it's like, you know, where do I go yeah, <laughs> type? Yeah, so yeah. I just always loved Garfield, man. It was just about the education, the the way the school looked, the the aura, that purple, man, that, that G. You know what I mean? Like, I just always wanted to be that. Some people got it tatted. Real, real talk. Yeah, I mean, real talk. You know, eventually, yeah. once I start getting some, you know, yeah, I'll, I'll yeah. get it. I'll get it. But <laughs> nah, like that was a. It was. I just wanted to be a part of that. I wanted to be a part of it, you know. And, and once that summer, once I was getting ready to transfer, I was like, man, where am I going? Like, where am I about to go? And you know, talk to Tremaine, talk to B, and we all just put it together a blueprint. Like, hey, let's go get one. You know, and we were supposed to be super dogs. You know, this haunts me still to this day. We lost on senior night. What do you mean senior uh, super dogs? Uh, that means when you go undefeated, twenty eight and zero. Oh, so we went twenty seven and one, but we still yeah, won. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But we were supposed to go undefeated. There's right. only been like I think a couple teams that has been a super dogs, and Joyce was one of them. Joyce, <laughs> Joyce Walker. I bet that, yeah, <laughs> yeah, like, Joyce. Yeah. She always get on me every time. Yeah. Like you ain't no super dog, <laughs> B. <laughs> <laughs> so oh, that always haunts me still to this day. But man, I had an amazing time. I, I built great relationships, obviously with you. I right. built, you know, with a lot of different people now. You know what I mean? So um, Garfield, man, that was it, it was everything for me. You know, I didn't I didn't even realize what I was in until I got a little older. Mm -hmm. You know, like Garfield helped me a lot. It was a different structure, as you know. I went to two other high schools. Yeah, yeah. I didn't have no stability. Garfield gave me that stability for that year. Yeah. And that was the big thing, you know? Yeah. And education-wise, everybody is, nah, we're not doing that. You're going to get your yeah, work in. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you feel me? So It was like, I mean, I know we, you know, sometimes being in the hallways kind of kick it a little bit. But right. Going to Garfield, education was definitely like, it, it wasn't like nobody was telling us that yeah. it was important. It was just, that's the, the It was the norm. Yeah, it was, just, it was, it was like, yeah. Like, even though you're skipping class, like, yeah. make sure you get that homework yeah. or something, you know? Yeah. I was I was like, and, and I, I love that because it's like people I don't even know holding me accountable, mm -hmm. you know? And that makes you want to be in that space. Right. Like, that makes you want to be around them type people, you know? So. I want to I wanna let uh, the co-host also get Absolutely. some questions in, but I Absolutely. will say, bro, y'all made you, Deshaun, and and I want to say Tremaine was yeah. the three transfers for Hoop. Yep. Just y'all three made our – like the class of 2014, y'all made our senior Unbelievable. year. Unbelievable. Well, I mean, it was already like lit. But, I mean, y'all added like the cherry on top. Like yeah. it was like 
a different vibe because we had never gone to school with y'all. So it was just like and hearing that from you because you've been there. You like, know what that, I mean? Big, it yeah, was, big. bro. It was like that's this is big. they got different energy. Like, <laughs> <laughs> it was good. We was coming with it, yeah. man. It was different, like you At, know. So once I was like, let's go. Deshaun got on board, man. It was yeah. the rest was history, yes. man. Yeah, rest was history. Shout out to all my GS Garfield <laughs> people. You know what I mean? Big bulldogs in the house, man. Shout out to all y'all, man. For real. Well, I actually have a question just to kind of piggyback off what you're saying. Yeah. So you were saying that Garfield kind of provided stability for you. Yeah. And, you know, you've been through all these different hardships growing up, whether it be your father or lack thereof, and then um, moving and then just all these different things before you had those you spoke on therapy briefly, yeah, yeah. but before you had those tools to cope with that type of hardship, like right. how did you deal with that? What was your coping mechanism? How did you navigate Shit, through that? Lap. Like everybody that know me, they know I'm always get my work in yeah. regardless. I don't party. Like I don't, I'm not, I'm not that type of guy. I, you know, of course I dibble and dabbled into it. I'm not perfect, but that's not where I have fun. You know, I'm, I'm a big believer in whatever I do. I got to have fun in it. If I don't, I'm not going, I don't care who's there. I don't care what event it is. Like, I I just, I'm so locked in on where I need to go and where I want to be. And the fact that all the pain that I went through as a, as a child and nobody really knew about that, you know, I kept that in. I psh, Demons in the gym 24-7. I'm talking about, like, my whole family. I'm sacrificing family time, you know? Yeah, in the gym. And no, nobody know that pain but me. You feel what I'm saying? Everybody got their own 24 hours of the day. You know, they go through what they go through. I'm not saying nobody, no other basketball player has hardships, but the shit that I've been through, like, I had to go to the gym. Otherwise, it was it was the streets. You know, I had an OG told me from the South, you know, B, I see the potential in you. You know, he's seen me doing some some wild stuff. And he said, I see the potential in you. He said, when you land, what you, what you land on, two feet. You can't have one foot in the streets, one foot in basketball. You got to have two foot in this. You know what I mean? So when he told me that, and my older brother is from the streets as well. I got a perfect example to see him go to jail, locked up. You know what I mean? Like, I never seen none of that, you know? So I had the right people in my corner for sure because I'm talking about easily one morning I could have woke up and been in the streets for real. Like, right. you know, not to say like that is a glorified or anything, but I just stayed in the gym. I stayed locked in. I thank God that he gave me the mental power at that young age to like, you know, fight my traumas and fight my and cope with it to go to the lab and go have fun, you know. So that's something that's always stuck in me. Like I'm, I'm always in the gym, or I'm always working out. It don't gotta be the gym. I'm always gonna do something working out. At, we was just talking about this, so like that's what that's what that's what helped me for sure. Did you have like specific mentors who helped? like guide or help you navigate through the type of things you were dealing with or is strictly just the gym i mean i didn't really get no mentors until like high school um really my grandpa my papa he's the one that installed a lot of the morals in me you know um i would say from him and my uncle jason uh he he played overseas that's my trainer he knows me like that's my father for i, I call him my pops for real because he didn't took care of me man and um, every summer I try to get out to Houston and go work out with him. You know, he has two daughters now. So that's, that's my, he was my motivation. He was everything I wanted to be. I seen him, he went to university of Buffalo. I seen him play basketball, we went over to seas to Brazil. Like he's the one that started all this, you know, my, and my granny, she hooped. Um, you know, I come from a great family, you know, so I would say my uncle Jason for sure out of, out of anybody, that's my role model. Like that's, everything I want to be in life. Like, he's the reason why I even want to have girls when I have kids. You know, I want to be a girl dad. Girl dad. You know? My dad's a girl dad. You know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> and he, he got two daughters. So, like, yeah. you know, I'm, I'm seeing him and it's starting to come to fruition because his older daughter, like, she is amazing in volleyball right now, about to start freshman year, high school, USA trials, everything. You know, and she was grinded with me as a as a pup. You know, that so to see her and to see her even text me, like, B, man, like, I'm, you just your motivation, like you know. So that that's what keeps me going, like for sure, one thousand percent. And I kind of, you know, growing up like that, I kind of veered off from my family. So they thought, you know, maybe I was like neglecting them or something. But you know, as my grandma just told me the other day, she was like, "Man, I I know you want to go somewhere." So I understood that what you were doing, you know. And to talk to your your peoples like that at an older age and understand it now is different. You know what I mean? So. Um, I would just say the gym for sure. Yeah. 
that's that's what helped me one thousand percent. So um, I want to go back to your senior year um, at Garfield um, during the season. You guys said you said that you were supposed to go twenty eight and zero. The team, yeah. you guys were good. Yeah. Um, but you guys end up going twenty seven and one. Yeah. On senior night. On senior night, we lost the game winner. <laughs> um, talk about the night. Tell us who you lost to and what yeah. was the locker room like after the game. <laughs> that was a great question. Uh, so we lost to Issaquah. Um, and this year, bro, Issaquah was – they had, like, racial slurs. They was calling us N-words. Yeah. At the beginning, this is our first – this is our first game of the season at Issaquah. They got posters, you – N words, all this. It goes on Como. Like it's it's yeah, it's wild. On the news, crazy. bro. We yeah. made the news. It was wild. So we always had this beef with Izuqua. Always. We, we, we whooping them, man. They, you know, they was good. We had good games and stuff, but so now what we played them three times throughout the season. We three and oh on them. Senior night, we got Izuqua. Right before we go to the dome, we feeling ourselves. You know, B tell us like, hey, y'all go undefeated, we can go to New York. And then we get invited to the Geico tournament. B meaning B Roy. My bad. I did, no, no, I, did, I, did that for, I, <laughs> no, I know who you're talking about. Facts, but. Facts. <laughs> so, and he's he's like, you know, they uh, you can get invited if you go 20, 28 and 0, and you a super dog. So that was our motivation throughout the whole year because we knew we had the talent to beat anybody. You know, Beach was obviously they were three A, so it was hard. We you know I talked throughout the city like who gonna win Beach or Garfield. I think that was like the most competitive time for real because we both had great teams. Yeah, you know. Um, but, man, senior night, it was clutch game. This is our fourth time playing them on a back-to-back -back week. So it's hard to prepare for somebody after you just got done playing them. Yeah. You know? So we know everything they're going to do. They know everything we're going to do. We run, a, we run a zone. Man, this haunts me still to this day. <laughs> <laughs> Trauma. Yeah, man. We go we go on a zone. We go to two, three. We, we, I think we up like one or, or two or something. We up, though. Man, I don't even know my boy's name. He must have came down, just faked it, and, and shot the three. I ain't gonna say who it was over, but you know he shot that. He shot the three, and it was game time, man. And it was tough because we had to walk back downstairs. Like our locker rooms are downstairs, so we got to go through the fan, like all the fans. This is senior night. Yeah. Everybody got their family out. We, you know, yeah. we finna vibe out. Hell no. Nah. He shot that. He made it. They was they was happy. We didn't even shake their hands. We just walked straight downstairs. We was hot downstairs. And then all the OGs from Garfield, this was the worst part. Mm. All the OGs came from Garfield, and they came in the locker room and said, you guys just messed up. Like, y'all, this ain't what Garfield is about. Like, y'all lose on senior night. You know what I mean? At all nights. So, like, so that was, uh, that was the tough part, man. But we battled through. I think that gave us – the strength that gave us that little motivation to push for for a state, because then who we end up meeting in state is a quad. Mm. first game. Now we didn't play them four times now, yeah. you know. So um, it was cool. We you know they were still calling us n words and stuff and during the game. Yeah. Oh my oh, god. I listen. thought it was just no. Listen, or listen. maybe I forgot. I'm not name dropping, but no, nah, it's all good. Woo! Nah, nah, nah. They good. Let them live their life. Yeah, but yeah, it was yeah. They they was they hit a three. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Walking back, and they on that. They on that. Hard R? They on that. Ooh. Hard R. <laughs> Hard R. <laughs> they on that, Ooh, for sure. That. Yeah. That's not basketball talk. That's, no. That's, that's get them up. So, What's exactly. Up? So, <laughs> you got to think, we're not trying to get out of character in front of all these people in nah, Tacoma. definitely not. You definitely. know what I mean? So, Haskins gave, he, he he kept it. Coach Haskins, let me give him some respect. He kept, he kept it. He kept it real with us and kept it. Like we had legacy on the back of our jersey. I B asked that. us, B Roy, he asked us, you want your last name or you want like a mantra? He said, and Haskins gave us legacy. Coach Haskins yeah. gave us legacy on the back. That was the that was our mantra for the whole year. Legacy. I remember that. You know, so once we once we got in the playoffs and once they he heard that, hey, legacy. Legacy. On my ring, still to this day. Legacy. That's, that's literally what it says. Hey, we gotta pull a picture of the ring. Yeah. You might have to send I should have brought him. You should have no, no, told you're good for B roll. We'll okay, I got you. I got you. Yeah, I got yeah. you. It sucks because it got that 27 and 1 on there, but it's hey, all right. Bro, hey, bro. Hey, you got the chip. It's right. I'm hot, though. Nah, you know, I'm supposed <laughs> yeah, to go oh, undefeated. Man. Yeah, man. But uh, nah, that, there was. I actually had a couple chances to win state. Um, we lost to Jackson at Fed my sophomore year uh, to one of the Kingmas. We lost on that on that opening round. Kingmas. Yeah. One of the king that he torched us, torched us up. My boy Jason Todd, shout out to my boy. Um, and then my junior year, 
we lost to Kent Meridian, I think. So then it was it was a blessing to get there my, you know, senior year. So I had my trials when I was there. So it was cool. So I want to I want to fast forward it to college now. Yeah. In college. Yeah. So I'm at Wazoo running track. Nah, we got to uh-uh. No? We got to go junior college. Oh, no, no, no. You no. can't forget about so, Juco. So, 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 so I'm at Wazoo, though. <laughs> oh, okay. I'm, I'm okay. at Wazoo. Heard, I'm at heard Wazoo. You, heard you. And you're at? Cochise. Cochise. In Arizona. Arizona. Douglas, Douglas, Arizona. And you're doing your thing over there. So run us through being out there and then getting to Idaho and, and playing with P. At University of Idaho? Yeah. Because because right. that's where I'm, you know, I'm trying to do the yeah. timeline thing. Yeah, yeah. So go ahead and. Uh, Man. Um, Cochise and Douglas, Arizona. How long were you, how long were you in Arizona? I was only there for the season, bro. Just for one season? <laughs> I got there at the beginning, you know, when we were supposed to report for school. Yeah. Soon as the season was done. You went to Idaho? No. Oh. I like, I got you. Let me. You go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead, brother. <laughs> <laughs> you feel me? So we, uh, I, I go at this time because my credits and everything, because I switched schools so many times in high school. I was never a bad kid or, you know, slow or none of that. I just never was a, a tent. Like, I never used to be there because yeah, yeah. my, my heart is just the stuff I had going on. But I tried to make it. Uh, so my credits wasn't transferable to go to a bigger school. Gotcha. I had some big schools on me out of high school, you know. And uh, that was a hard pull. Oh, um, what, what were the, the um, name of those schools? Um, not official offer, but this is where Romar was at UW. He was showing interest for sure. Uh, Boise State, uh, Oregon State. um, I think I had, uh, man, I, I think TCU out in Texas. Um, I had I had some big schools, man. I was getting some great looks, you know, and for my size and what I could do. So uh, Nevada too. So um, damn, you kind of threw me off right there. I didn't go, <laughs> but nah, you good, you good. I got you. So we go. Um, my credits wasn't transferable, so I couldn't go to a big D one. Yeah, I had to. I didn't even know what a JUCO was. What the hell is junior college like? Right, right. You know, and once I once somebody understood, actually the coach. Coach Jerry Carrillo, one of my, I ain't gonna lie, like, I ain't never, he's probably one of the craziest coaches I ever played for, you know. Um, but the dude installed in you basketball tips that you probably will never forget. Mm. So it was like a win-win with him, but or a win and lose. Um, ended up going to Coach East, found out this school was there. You know, I get there. This is when uh, I got Rail Hennings with me and Juwan Stephanie. So we all three are, we're all three at Coach East. All three of us. Um, Bring you back know? some memories, bro. Yeah. Because I forgot about that. Yeah, all three of us was there. Damn. Real was my roommate. Shout out to my boy. Um, I think it's true. And so we, you know, we, we started off the season. We had three guys from the six there. You know, started off the season, was killing. I got freshman of the year, everything. I was cook, I was cooking. Average double-double. Um, you know, at the same time, going through it with my coach. Like, we both hot heads at this time. Like, I didn't really understand my mental at this point. I always used to be a little hothead in high school. So um, we always used to go at it, you know, and one time it got like real bad and not like to the point we was throwing fists or nothing, but this, he used to always throw the ball at people and call you, you know, bad words in front of your face. Like that's normal for a basketball player. Like, you know, I'm not I trying to say, put I him out there. Track, man. I yeah, but that, that's normal as a bat. Like you're going to have coaches like that, but he was a little OD with it. And at the same time, you know, I'm starting to get into my manhood. Like, hold up. You know, so and I was never afraid to speak up for myself. Right. Never. I don't care what the consequences was. I was never afraid. I'm always be authentic. Sagittarius. Yeah, I'm always be authentic. I'm always. <laughs> and uh, man, they did like a vote on the team, man. It was like, man, do we want to send BJ home or something? But before even that, I found out because a school called me. Like when you go to a JUCO, you can go to a, a university after that. Mm -hmm. A school called me and was like, hey, your, your credits are still not transferable. So I had. Garfield people look into what was going on, what classes I was in. I was in like five PE classes, straight from what the coach. I didn't know at the time, you know, but damn near PE classes as count as far as credits. Mm -hmm. You feel me? So he had me in like some other classes. I'm thinking I'm doing some, but these only add for one one credit, and you know you need like a certain amount of credits yeah, to yeah, transfer. Yeah. So I once I find out, I was like, man, my trust was gone, it was gone. I left. Crazy. I left. I didn't think about it twice. I, I bounced out. I grabbed all my stuff and left. Left school. That was probably the worst decision that I did, but it was the best decision. One of those. You feel me? It was a pivot moment. It was a pivot moment. I got you. It was a pivot. Because at the time, I was dating somebody. She was at Central. I stayed with her. Shout out to my boy, Naeem Ladd. Um, this is all a process, bro. Like I never gave up on myself. I knew I had one more year left yeah, yeah. to really go prove. I could have went to Central. I'm like, I'm not a D2 dude. 
I'm not a D2 guy. Nothing against D2 guys. I just, I'm not that. Right? Lad started inviting me to open gyms. I'm cooking. Talk crazy. I'm cooking. Talk crazy. Cooking. Now, word of mouth gets through their, their coach starts to call other schools for me now. North Idaho College in Coeur d'Alene. Mm-hmm. This is how it happened. It was either out of CSI or North Idaho. The coach at CSI was like, I'm not good enough. Oh, so I, you know, I wrote that down on the calendar. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I knew I knew that NIC was going to play CSI. Bet. Wrote that down. <laughs> and I went to Coeur d'Alene just for that reason. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Went to NIC, bro. We went 32-0, and 31-0. and We, Bro, ridiculous. I never, I never, that was, that was crazy. Yeah, yeah. To go from almost 28 and 0 to go to 31, 32 and 0. Right. Man, I was, it was ridiculous. I had an amazing time in Coeur d'Alene. I, the relationships, I tell people still to this day, money can take you places, but relationships can take you anywhere in the world. Do I, don't, I, don't I always say that? I'm telling All you, man. Time, man. I, 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 try to, I try to say this to the young guys coming up. It's like you never know who you're walking into. You know what I'm saying? Just be respectful, be polite, definitely protect yours. But also, who, who, I'm Brayon. Nice to meet you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. So it was just a relationship fact that stuck with me, obviously, because of the stability coming back from my childhood. I didn't have that. So I, I was always eager to get stability from people. And once I got it, I stuck with you. Like, I'm loyal for you. You, If I see you got that with me, I'm with you. You know? So, uh, man, that was – Corey Lane was amazing, man. Shout out to all my people there, Coach Corey, Coach G, um, all the the staff there, like you know, when I go back there, they show love still, man. So, and that's what made me go to University of Idaho. Now coming out of NIC, I was averaging 22, 22, nine. I got all American. I got these accolades. My boy just signed to Florida State. My other guy, I could have went to like Gonzaga, red shirted, or could have went. Yeah, I could have went to a lot of different schools, bro. You know what I mean? Nobody really noticed, bro. Yeah. This is like in house stuff. Like nobody Gonzaga. noticed stuff, right? And I decided to take the leap to go to U of I. Now, why in the hell would I do that? All these schools is calling me to red shirt. I'm ready now. Mm. I'm not about to red shirt. And you're not about to pick me up because you want him. And you think I'm going to red shirt and he's going to play. It's not how we're doing it. <laughs> That's not how we're doing it. And you know some people in this position, bro, they're not going to bet on themselves like that. Right. You know? Right. And and at, the, and at that time, I didn't even know I was betting on myself. I was just like, nah, I'm not doing that. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. You feel me? Yeah. And man, listen, got to U of I, loved it, loved Moscow. Obviously, I had you and Pullman in my time, and it was crazy. Junior year, I averaged ten and seven. I was like, all right, I'll start. To, I get it now. I got my feet wet. Mm-hmm. I came home with my boy Robel at, at, at Athletic Form. He's been taking over the city right now. Man, I'm telling you, I grind. Turn that ten and seven to seventeen and eleven. My senior year. Shooting forty eight percent from three, you feel what I'm saying? So like, that's that senior year, that motivation that took me there, right? Now this is a mid major, you know what I mean? Like you don't really get too far out of a mid major, man. By the best grace of God, I have like five different agencies calling me, wanting to pick me up. I signed with my agency, Dan Colton, and uh, man, he got me pre drafts. I had like three pre drafts going into the NBA out of college. Never seen this coming. On the last day to get accepted into summer league, Cleveland called me, Cleveland Cavaliers. Didn't even work out for them. You know what I mean? They called me, hey, we want to bring you on the summer league team. Caught the flight the next day. Cleveland caught the flight the next day to Vegas. Playing in summer league. Now I'm in the league. This is where I always wanted, you know? This is always where I wanted to play at. I'm in in the league, bro. And I still to this day, man, it's crazy. I think about it because... I was just so happy being there that I didn't even realize the opportunity I had, bro. Uh, You know? Not to say I regret anything I did because look at where I am now. Right. I'm still winning, you know? But, man, that opportunity, bro, like just coming from everywhere I went through, you know, and just putting on an NBA jersey, bro, meeting LeBron in the locker room. Like. You got to meet LeBron? Yeah. This this is when he got trans. This is when he got traded to the Lakers that year. So he was sitting in on the on the bench with the Lakers shirt shorts ah, on. And that's when Colin, so Colin was my teammate. Colin Saxon. Um, that's when he got drafted. So when that whole year of uh you see the meme when Colin playing defense like this, like you literally see me on the side and you can hear me. You feel me? So that was that year. 
that was that year. And Bron came in the locker room and said, "What's up to T. Lou before the game?" Just looking like a gorilla, literally. I swear, bro. Like I never forget that, bro. I'm dead ass. Like that was my first time ever meeting him. Um, and you know, just growing up in Seattle around basketball is it's a blessing because we get fortunate to meet these celebrities and these superstars that when we go out and meet all these guys, you guys is regular. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, but we grew up around JC, you know, I, Brandon Roy. Not like, to cut you off, but I, I still live in the city to this day. I see B-Roy. Every time. When I go to beach, I see Nate. I every see time. All, all the time. Like, you don't it's understand. Regular. And even when the Sonics was here, we had Ray Allen. Like, I remember JC used to open beach, bro. I used to walk down the trail. Jamal Crawford. Yeah, Jamal Crawford. I'm sorry. No, Big good, bro. Good. I got you. I got you. <laughs> Literally, he used to open up the gym, and they used to have runs. Rashard Lewis, Luke Rittenauer, uh, Nate Robinson. This is T. Will when they was all, you know what I mean? Like, I got a chance to watch the great bump. Like, great bump. My first time seeing Ray Allen, he, me and my brother. This is when Randy's is in the South, and they close it down now. But uh, me and my brother seeing Ray Allen on the way back. You know, we asking for some bread or something, trying to get something, you know what I mean? We young, you know, this is Ray Allen. Right. Hey, let me get something to eat. Bro, sp- bro, bro gave us 100 off the rip. You feel me? Like, we're just feeling this love at a young age to where the point, like, when we grow up, this is how it's supposed to be, right. you know? And I, I, I ain't think about all that, bro. Like, I'll be forgetting about that. We literally spent that whole yeah, 50 in the store <laughs> on some snacks, honey buns, all that. Look, on every, Texas. Literally, <laughs> literally, literally. But that was our 100 from Ray, bro. Like, you know, he ain't have to do that. No. Nah. You know what I mean? We we just watching. I'm watching basketball. I'm just watching all the big bros play. But look, you remember that. Yeah. So now when a little one comes up to you, got to pay it forward, bro. For sure. Got to. For sure. That's the biggest thing now, you know, with the with the pro career because, you know, obviously we're going to get into the overseas talk too. But um, now with this, with the young, with the youth, bro, just trying to get in touch with them. Like, I, I, I say one thing is like, you know, when, a per, when an older person come around you with some game or something, you know, they'd be like, man, don't be one of them. I wish you would, or I wish right, I would have right, did this. Right, right. You know, as 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 a youngin, I ain't really stick. Nah. But, but now, you know, I'm 27 now, so that's my I mean, but you made some good decisions. Like, yeah. you're, not, you're not. Yeah, for sure. It, it could be worse. For sure. You know what I'm Absolutely. saying? Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Um, But I wanted to talk about, uh, so when you got to Idaho, yeah. and this this is not really like it's basketball related, but not really, bro. Yeah. But I remember uh, a couple times, man. So um, there were some games, man. When you, when y'all played against uh, Wazoo, yeah, and, sure. and, and I and I played for first of all, y'all smacked Wazoo. <laughs> Idaho smacked Wazoo. I think it was 20, 20, 2017. <laughs> they wasn't expecting that, <laughs> man. No, nobody was like. And and the thing was, everybody who went was like, oh yeah, we play Idaho today. Yeah, like, they thought it was food. It was like, one of those, like let's, let's let's go to the I'm game. I'm not gonna lie. Every time y'all came, I would be like, for sure, that, you know? for sure, for sure. Yeah. Listen, I'm going down in the history in the Palouse. Understand I'm, I'm that. I'm sitting right. Understand at the court. that. Every time Brown came to Wazoo and played, I'm sitting floor seat. I'm right there. Literally. Hey, go get one. They're like, bro, he plays for the other team. Shut up. <laughs> yeah. he, hey, get up. Don't do it. No look. Literally. Something. And and uh, like I said, I was doing some homework the other night and watching some of the clips, bro. Y'all smacked yeah. the Wazoo, bro. No, I'm not gonna lie. That was probably that was probably <laughs> that was probably. Oh. That was the highlight of the season because I got a chance to play against my boy Robo. Shout out Robo. Yeah. Um, and Malachi. Malachi from Tacoma. Mm-hmm. Malachi Flynn in, in the league. So I got a chance to play against my bros, you know? Mm-hmm. Previous year, my junior year, we got smacked by Wazoo. We got smacked. Josh Hawkinson put up double-double on us. D. Lacey, all them. Uh, uh, what's my boy? Ike Rebu. Yeah, yeah. It, it was going crazy. So I said, all right, I'm, I'm going to get my lick back. Like, I'm one of them. I always, I'm going to write my stuff down. I'm going to get my lick back for sure. Mm-hmm. And I, when I tell you I came in that game, I was, like, locked in. I had 28, 5 for 5 from 3. And I think I had, like, eight boards or something. I was going crazy. I was crazy. Same time, Perion's going crazy. I was going to say playing with Pete. Same time, Vic's going crazy. Like, bro, I mean, we couldn't miss. The 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 gym, the, the hoop was just an uh, ocean. And we ended up blowing them out by like, duh, nobody seen that coming. <laughs> nobody seen that coming at all. And I went on a tear after that, though. I, I think I, I hit like 25 plus for the next three games. And uh, right. yeah, I was I went on a tear after that. And it's like, because I know I can play with them. I knew I could. Yeah. I knew I could. You I know? mean, you six. It looked like you were six six when you came in here. Nah. Six four. That's that's a light, bro. You know I'm six I mean? seven, hey. bro. That's light in. I'm six seven right now. Yeah, this basketball stuff is crazy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
um <laughs> to 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 do a little pivot yeah um i was gonna say uh you know some some athletes myself included kind of warp and wrap their identity around playing sports yeah and we talked about this a little bit off camera and stuff but right. uh for the camera for the people watching at home or in their cars or whatever right. um do you have any other outlets i know you said uh killer asked you you know what kind of outlets did you have as yeah. far as like getting through tough times yeah. you know what i mean because i also even though i didn't make it as far as y'all did in hoop mm -hmm. Shooting around the gym was my outlet. That was my that was my sanctuary. Right. So, do you have any other uh, outlets? You know what I mean, so that your life is balanced. Like, right. you know, do you hike, golf? I know you said you don't really party like that, mm -hmm. but how does Brayon stay stay balanced? Like, stay, like what's yeah. your stay and then how how do you keep like I know basketball is a big part of your identity, mm -hmm. but that's not the only thing that you are. Absolutely, right? and that's not the only thing that you're going to be. Yeah. So, what are some other things that you do? And, and, um, wrap your man, that's a great question. So, you know, as a as a child growing up basketball was my outlet that was my answer to that so as i started getting older and started going through you know the child the the tribulations of growing up into a man um i started to figure out like man going on hikes going to feel the earth going to going to the water going to see the waves and just hearing the, the, the water that yeah the serenity of it you know that that's my outlet right. you know i'll pull up to the water and just sit there for hours you know rather i'm doing whatever my stretch my just yeah you know I, i'm not really a meditator but Shit, me just sitting there, I'm meditating. You know, I'm sitting there, like, just thinking about everything that I've been through and, you know, just extremely, you know, letting God know that I'm blessed and I'm thankful, you know. So, uh, hikes, um, I love to golf. Golfing has been a a huge point in my life because it taught me patience. You know, I, I was, man, golf has it really took my life to a whole nother level. So, I take my hat off to that. Golf has definitely been there for me, especially when I went through like depression. Like that's when I really loved golf because I was out there, twenty five eight. Like when, when did you experience this? That? Was uh, three years ago. Um, so when I was overseas. So we'll, we'll, oh, during we'll, COVID and stuff. Uh, kind of right after ago. COVID. Yeah, right after COVID. Yeah, okay. yeah, right during that time. Yeah, man. Yeah. Um, but yeah, just like hikes, golfing, um, shit, driving around, road tripping. Um, I like, you know, I've got people out east in Spokane and Idaho, so I'll go out there and go uh, go fishing. You know, definitely the countryside is in me. Like, I'll, I'll go on horses. We got horses down south where my family and stuff. So um, I love all that type stuff, man. Anything like that, I'm, I'm game for outside. And, you know, I'll, like I said, I'll step if I need to, but I, I'll, I'll be in my own little circle. <laughs> what about when, like, you, you were saying earlier how you had gotten your injury and everything like that? Yeah. What did you do during that time, like, to okay. clear your mind? And you want to fast forward to that or you want to get into... Okay, well, I'll, we'll say that. Yeah, well, or you could break it down from before the injury. Yeah. How you got to play overseas, how you got connected. It didn't right. That's what I was, that's what I was saying. Away. So, like, coming from Idaho, um, coming from Idaho, you know, I ended up signing with the agency. And uh, the G League for Cleveland Cavaliers, I could have went there. You know, they offered me a certain amount of money. And but I wanted to play in the big games, like for the big teams, right? So a lot of guys didn't understand that um, it wasn't about money. So I either had the G or I had Germany. Germany was my first offer, and they offered me a significant amount more than what I was gonna make over here. So I wanted to take Germany, and I wanted to go see the world. Right. You know, like I wasn't afraid to take that step and go see the world. A lot of people in my position, they would chase the NBA because it's the NBA. It's always gonna be there. You might not get this opportunity to go to Germany though. Right. You know, so. Uh, first time, my first contract in Germany, Braunschweig, Germany. Uh, Dennis Schroeder, actually, his city, he owns the team. So that's my guy. Shout out to Dennis. Um, that was my first year. My second year, I've been with the same agency since my pro. So, you know, they loyal to me. I'm loyal to them. Uh, my second year, I went to Greece. I played in the Champions League uh, in Greece, Athens. I lived in Athens. Uh, all the places I'm naming off, we stayed in 10 months. So that's how long the season is, maybe 11. I stayed in Greece. My third year, uh, I went to Turkey. I was in Istanbul, Turkey my third year. Or Manisa, uh, a little bit of Manisa, and then Istanbul for my third and fourth. So they were, like, kind of split. Or not even. Uh, my fourth, yeah, my fourth was in Istanbul. And then uh, my fifth year just recently was in Milan, Italy. And uh, that was, man, that was amazing because this was the year, like, you know, I was really locked in. And I told you guys, like, I really didn't go out like I didn't I didn't do the extra activities I was home I was recovering I was extra work I was you know doing my own regiment and uh man the day before my birthday December 7th uh 
like I said, was going up for a layup and it changed my life forever. You know, never had no serious injury. I've been playing ball for 20 some years. Never had no serious injury. Sprained ankles, that's, that's common, you know. Um, they told me, you know, well, well, first I went up for the layup. It was non-contact. Uh, felt something pop in my leg for sure. Just my knee gets instantly hot at that time, you know. And uh, I don't know what to feel, so I'm starting to panic. This is the only time I cried too, out throughout this whole testament, the whole time. Um, you know, they told me to try to get up, and I tried to get up and walk, and it just wasn't it wasn't what I felt. It wasn't the same, you know. And uh, never forget when she came out the hospital doors and told me, you know, in Italian, like, you know, they're telling you, like, yo, you just tore your shit. Like, you just blew your knee out, right? She told me, she said it in Italian. So I got to look at my manager. When I see him put his head down, I'm on my crutches. I see him put his head down. I already knew it was over. You feel me? Started. I, I easily just was like, bro, I got to go. I got to go. I got to get out of here. Like, that was probably the hardest like, somebody just asked me this the other day, like, when is the hardest time you've had throughout your injury? That was probably the hardest time. Hearing the lady just come in there and telling you that. And she just told me, I told my ACL. I went to the orthopedic. That nigga said, you told your MCL, ACL, and yeah. fractured your tibia, and, <laughs> and you got an infusion. and Yeah, so, you know, it was way more. You know, I'm thinking, I just told my ACL, I'm about to be good. No, you know, so... Mind you, I'm overseas by myself at this time. I told my team I want to be there. I don't want to just leave since you get hurt. A lot of guys leave and they, you know, I want to be there. I want to help the young guys. Um, they just didn't have everything in proper order for me for rehab, so I had to make a professional decision. Nothing against them. Caps off to Cremona. I appreciate you guys for giving me the opportunity. Um, you know, I just had to make a professional decision to come home and get rehab. You know, but that was uh, what helped me. Because immediately after I got hurt, like, the seven days with stitches, I couldn't move. I had to be home. Like, that was challenging because it's like either I'm a, I'm a fall or I'm going to pick myself up, you know? And I started reading. First book, my friend, she gave me, she was an Italian. She gave me a book, Atomic Habits. Oh, I love that book. Man, that love took it. me to the next level. Heard about it. And I swear, because I didn't understand the habits that I had. You know, and once I started realizing that, I'm like, all right, from right then and there, I remember, I'm going to grab my phone, I don't mean to grab it, but I put this on my wallpaper, setbacks are bound to happen, but you have to get up and go get it again. I literally, I literally have this on my wallpaper, as you see that, I never changed it. Ever since that day, I put that on my wallpaper, I started reading books, like I'm talking about, man, Alchemist, uh, uh, Bell Hooks, One Love, Four Agreements, uh, Body Keep Score. I'm talking about, I'm, I'm going. I'm just rolling out. I'm never a reader. I'm from the hood. I ain't reading no damn books. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> Nothing against my things, but you know, but I'm not reading no books. Like, that wasn't me. I didn't do that. So now I enjoy picking up a book and reading. Like, and more so the self help books, though. Yes, yeah. Yes, self help books. Too. The, the psyche, the psycho, what? Psychology. Psychology. There we go. <laughs> of, of, of it, just the mental aspect of it, bro. They just touch me in a different way. Like, you know, actually seeing the four agreements is just amazing book like i I'm recommend that, right that to anybody I, I man i recommend that to anybody like and it's a pick and read once you finish it, you could just go in there and pick and read your your section and get right you know mm -hmm. so that's what helped me and ever since then i put that on my wallpaper i just knew i had to go get it and i'm a person like i don't need motivation like everything i've been through in life is my motivation mm -hmm. so this just added on to the fire you know and now i'm so locked in like it's ridiculous, you know, and I love it because you got to fall in love with the grind. You got to fall in love with this shit. Like, if you don't fall in love with it, you're not going to get what you really want. You know what I mean? You can get there, you know, and what? And, and I felt it before and I heard all my, my OGs say, you can get there and, and it's easy to get content. You got to keep working, you know? I felt that because I've been at the top and, and, and top division and had to realize, like, nah, you got to keep working for this. You can't just be content because you up here. You got to keep working. Right, so I've been through. I've been through it, like Nipsey said. I've been through all them levels. I felt that. All the emotions. I felt through all, all them the emotions. emotions. <laughs> Literally up and down, diagonal, wherever you want to go, you know. And I'm only 27 years old, and I feel like I'm just getting into my prime right now. Like I got a lot of basketball to go, and I'm I'm really like that. Like I'm, you know. And I'm talking my ish because I put in a lot of work. I put in a lot of work, and I, I I'm, I'm humble. I'm I'm a lot of people that know me. They know I'm humble, you know. And I I feel like. 
I'm aggressive. Like, I'm, I'm, I'm ready to just to get out there and show everybody like, nah, I'm really like that, you know? So that's just been my motivation and been on my head. Like I've copped an apartment downtown and I've been locked in. Like I'll drive wherever we can in work. Um, right now, literally in a few days, tomorrow, actually we're celebrating tomorrow. It's my seven month from surgery. <laughs> you feel me? So, um, I'm clear in one more month and, uh, you know, it's back to, back to it. So I'm excited. Like I'm, I'm just, I'm excited to get back on the court. Uh, like I said, I feel like, you know, the motivation was never needed. Like this is, you know, this is my call and everything that we do in life is already written, you know, shout out to my papa. He's always installed that in me. You know, God has always had everything what we need written, you know, just make sure you have your relationship with him and try to, you know, just let him know that you're thankful and you're grateful. That's all I try to do. You feel me? Um, because I am grateful. It being away from the game, something that I've always had, you know, I had to backpedal like, damn, be like, that's what made me fine. So now I'm I'm in I got my LLC right now, getting ready for my, you know, this I wasn't gonna say nothing, but Go getting ready for my label. I'm about to drop my label out, my clothing line. Um, I'm about to do the clothing line. I'm actually gonna do an athletic gym. Um, I'm doing it right now. I'm getting my trainer's license, my CPT life coach. I want to be a life coach, athletic coach, sports performance. So it's a lot of grind, a lot of backdoor work we got to do with that. Yeah, yeah. But I got some stuff in motion for sure. If, if you need help, if, I mean, I'm sure you got all the help. You yeah. Need, but if you no. need some tips and some Absol help absolutely. on how to get the LLC, yeah. LLC University, yep. that's how we got ours. Yep. It's very Say simple, no self explanatory, bro. Say and no it, more. It, people, people complicate it. Yeah. It's very simple. There's videos you don't even have to read. Yeah. You know what I mean? Because I know you say you don't. Nah, nah, <laughs> I know you read now. I read now. <laughs> I love to read. But, but you, can, you can watch it on like one and a half speed. They go over it. It's yeah. simple. You know what I mean? So we're. Nah, for sure. Good yeah, looking on that. Yeah, bro. No, nah, that's yeah. definitely because my brother, shout out to French. He got his own uh, LLC right now. And, he's about know, to do something with the, with the, with dude, the, the donuts. Yeah, yeah, the, yeah, I already yeah, know. Yeah, I can yeah, tell. Yeah. Yeah, so he's yeah, he's been tearing up the city, man. Different towing. He got a towing company actually. So okay, okay. he's he's different. Uh, his whole thing is too different. Shout out to my big bro. Is um, he still making music? Man, side, side his side his side. whole testimony is is lit. like he you know he came making music and all that. Yeah. Had kids and he turned around and you know he started to understand the power of, of a black African American in this world, and he That's stopped rapping. He man, stopped dude. preaching that. That, that stuff that he didn't want the young guys to understand right, right. or to, to to live up to, right, right. you know? So he changed his life. My boy is a 100% is a father, all his responsibilities, taking care of his job and, and going to work 24 seven, getting his money. Um, and he having a little fun in his Hellcat tearing up the city, man. Tearing so, it up. You know? I've been seeing donuts around too. I've been seeing like the time around, yeah. like, I feel like that was him, but I don't We're know. Sure. You know what I mean? But yeah. nah, he he taking over the city right now. So he got car meets, and you know how they had the Kent races. So yeah, he's, he oh, he's like, there. He holding it down like he oh, one of the head. Us. He the head honcho. You know, like, my, my pops be knowing about little, little stuff like that. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. He just actually because the police started getting word of it, you know, back then. But he did it official. He got his. He did it everything legit. Yeah, yeah. So now he had the police on one event. They knew everything that was going on. So they couldn't stop it. They, they couldn't stop it. What you going to do when we got our paperwork, man? It's mad because my operation's legit. <laughs> I won't say that. Right. Uh, but, um, man, um, thank you for sharing uh, the fact that you got your LLC. You about to have a clothing line and everything yeah. else you got going yeah, on. Yeah, be on the lookout, man. BB4, we coming. For Fitness, we coming. Is there is there a website attached to it that you want to shout it out? We coming. Not coming. yet. It's in the it's works. Good. It's, it's good. in it's the good. works. It's but it's, yeah, it's, yeah. It's, it's pulling up, man. You know, I'm dropping gems. For for your podcast, yeah. you know, yes. whether you whether you like me or not, I know I got the following. So, yeah. you know, I just hope to. Uh, really, it's just about the message, man. For fitness, for a better you. Yeah. That's, that's for fitness. For fitness, four is my favorite. Number. I was gonna say that's your number. That's bro. you know, that's always been drawn <laughs> my to me. Number two, and and fitness is a, is an important aspect of my life. You know, as I say, I have to get a workout in to feel good about myself throughout that day. You know, so I just implemented them too, and just for a better you. You know, like fitness is going to help you get your mental, get everything you need right. Your eating regimen, you're getting your temple right, you know, getting your recovery right. Like that's what fitness is for. It's not just workouts. It's not just, you know, getting out there and sweating. It's the mentality of having the consistency of coming back to the gym. You know what I mean? So that's like, that's my message for for fitness. That's what I want to push out. You know, when I when I envision having my, my studio, you know, seeing big four fitness on the outside. And, yeah, absolutely. Come get your work in. I need to come get hey, your work also, in. Also, also, 
you ever need a personal trainer, yeah, shameless plug. Come on, come on, bro. Say right no more. Here. You hear me talking? I'm gonna yeah, need some yeah, employees. Yeah, yeah. So, <laughs> plyometrics, man. You know, yes, I'm all yeah. about it. Yeah, I'm, 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 I'm getting into that now. You know. right now so I love that. Actually, he, so just a little backstory for mm-hmm. people who don't know. Nobody yep. knows, but. You used to come to the track meets and see me jump yes, sir. at the time, you know, in high school. Jab is like hey, that. Hey, yo, he, hey, yeah, yeah. Jab Let him like know, that. Because I told you I had to. Jab is like that. Listen. I'm a dad now, so it's over. He but, can get but, out there and easily go dunk and make it look easy. Easy, like, bro. Easy. Like, like, I, can, I can show you real life, bro. But, you know? Um, nah, man. Yeah, when you get the merch and stuff set up, let us know, man. Because yeah. we, that's what this platform is for. So we got the Sonics and the Mariners and stuff Absolutely. up now. But eventually we'll have your stuff and Absolutely. whoever else comes on if they got merch and it's gonna be full of just all their yeah. merch and, and business cards and all kind of stuff like yeah. that's the kind of no absolutely bro to create. um I, I think i would say just one more thing too because a lot of guys get caught up in that nba stuff and there's a lot of guys in the city that's trying to push themselves to go overseas and mm-hmm. and work and they look up to me because i've been in some of the places that they trying to get to mm-hmm. so i just wanted to say man keep grinding overseas is a grind you understand that once you understand you're coming into that you know you're going into a whole nother world you got to learn the language the food the the way they eat the way they shower is nothing the same you know you get lonely out there the way they you get, shower you get, yeah they the don't have different? you got to be rich to have a tub they got stand-up showers man you know what i mean like it's different <laughs> it's too- hold on do you sit down when you shower Nah, you gotta st- stand up. Shower. Like you know, a tub. You know, you you rather have a t- you dead ass get a phone booth and with a with a hose in there, bro. Damn there, like it's lit a little bit, but to us, we get a tub. You go yeah, walk into yeah, a tub to go you. take a shower. You don't yeah. have that. I got you. So you would have a stand up shower and then an additional tub on the end, like okay. so. But it's different. Far from that, the the eats everything, man, and understand that mentally that you're gonna go through these these trials and tribulations out there. These coaches is gonna test you. They go on, they go and test you on purpose too. Absolutely. And knowing that your job can be gone at any day. So I just say, bro, keep working. A lot of guys out here, you know, they try to get gym times. I see them. As we had a conversation earlier, I already said, come work out with me. Already off the rip, you know. Um, I I just want to let them guys know, bro, keep pushing. Just because you're not in the league, it's a lot of money out here to get. You know what I mean? Like everybody, everybody can go get it. We got the same 24, you know. And they giving a lot of bread out there. So just keep working, man. Um, that's the thing. I, that's the little message I wanted to give out to the Hoopers out there, bro. You know, because uh, I see them out here a lot, man. And, you know, a lot of people just get stuck on that league, bro. Like, don't think you got to get to the NBA and don't make it. You know what I they mean? Got the you got the big three, too. Shout out to Ice Cube. Big three. There's a lot. And the TBL in the city. Like, a lot of guys been here in the TBL for the Super Hawks. Like, it's a lot of motion out here, man. It's a lot There's of a lot motion. Of ways to get it. Yeah. Yep. Absolutely. Um. So, on, on the show, we usually do, like, a final words. Yeah. Which is, like... It can be an inspiring quote, Bible verse, uh, something from a book, lyrics, uh, what you just did. Mm-hmm. Did you want that to be your, I out, mean, your outro or do you want to say something else? Because we got one, we got two more things. So the yeah. final words and then we got like a little silly little, okay. would you rather? Um, thing. Nah, man, just. So this is your final words, right? Yeah, this is my final words. I would say just be authentic, be yourself. Walk into these buildings just because, you know, they got a name, they got a, a high position and high rank and be yourself. At the end of the day, they're going to love you for what you do and who you are, you know? And, and yeah, or not. And if they don't, so be it. Walk out the door just with your head high as you came in, you know? So just have that confidence, man. Believe in yourself and, and the work will show. Whatever you do in life, the work will show. You can't cheat the game. You can't cheat what you're doing if you're trying to get to the top. You know, it's a long road if you're honest. It's easy if you're cheating. So I just say stick to the grind, man, and, and run your marathon for sure. RP to Nip Huss, man, the chief. You know that. Relationships over money. Absolutely. For sure. Absolutely. Okay, so. Yeah, let's get active. Yeah. I'm, <laughs> I'm remixing it because yeah. I'm going to do my own thing, okay? <laughs> yeah. So, okay, the original one is saying having to tiptoe instead of walk or move to a different country on your own. My remix is would you rather have to play ball on your tiptoes for the rest of your life or would you rather move to a different country but it's like uh like a third world yes man i ain't gonna hold you shit if i'm playing on my tippy toes i'm bouncy so <laughs> you just hold your tippy toes the whole time the whole, the whole time but big toe to stronger than them up, like, <laughs> <laughs> hey i'm trying to tell you shit i ain't gonna lie shit because it's basketball so i'm gonna figure out a way to play on my tippy toes we're gonna get that money on for sure okay one more one more one more <laughs> for sure 
Forget what you did in the last week or look 50 years older than you are. Yeah, I'm forgetting what I did last week. I ain't even going to hold you. It's you don't want to look old. It's been trials and tribulations, bro, coming into, you know, I had a lot of, you know, a lot of people think that I got, my life is from what I show is easy. You know, I don't go through what I go through. I got a lot of distractions this week, man. And I'm literally leaving today to go get a workout in from my profession, man. So to, to, you know, to ask that question, like, forget everything from last week, these last few days. Anything, anything. before today. Like, I'm, I'm dead ass serious yeah. when I say that. You might forget how to hoop. Bro, you feel me? And and I had, you know, I'm trying to go. I ain't played in, in seven months, eight months. So, like, this is my first time about to go work out in front of people. Yeah. You know, you know how much nerves I got in my body right now? But I'm confident, though, because that's what I do. I get on the court. This is what I do. Like, when I get out there, it's, it's, it's easy. But, like, the fact... I'm 80%. I'm like 85, 80% right now. The rest of the percentage is mental. You know what I mean? So everything is mental. Like when you say that, like, I'm just trying to be a clear head. Like, I'm glad I came and did. I told Jab, he was like, man, we're going to reschedule. Nah, bro, I'm coming in there. I got, I'm, I leave today. I got you. I'm going to put it on my schedule. I'm here. And I'm glad I did it because of the stuff that I've been through these last few days. Man, like, just coming in here, seeing my brother, just, you know, being able to get some stuff off my chest that a lot of people haven't heard about. You know is 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 amazing so like i just thank y'all for giving me the opportunity for that for one yeah, you. and you never know what somebody is going through you know throughout the anybody in this room could have went through some shit like that you know but man i can just only tell from my point of view because that's you know that's me so i just i really really take everything away from last week this week whatever so we live in today okay you know? <laughs> last question i'm related to the game but do you think that playing ball is your purpose or do you think that you found your purpose outside of that that's a great question shit i was put on earth to play ball mm -hmm. but ball is not everything right. i understand that ball is going the ball is going to stop bouncing at some point right so me venturing off and being a life coach i feel like my story and everything that i've been through i can help somebody else mm -hmm. so i feel like god has put me on this earth to play ball and to help people and be a service, be a servant to others and not necessarily a way of being materialistic, but just showing them the way. Like I just told him, I ain't meet him. I just, my first day meeting him. I want to bring him to the gym. He's trying to get somewhere. I, I, I know that, you know, I know how I feel, you know? So I, I think, I think that's my calling right now, you know, and, and I'm running with it. Um, and I'm a quick learner. I like to learn. I like to venture off. I'm adventurous. So, I feel like shit, whatever I put my mind to, I can do it. You know what I mean? Um, and I would say that's, that would be my answer for that. I just think my call, my calling is to help people and to give them a better look and give them a different light at the end of the tunnel. You know, so I, I, I can say that for sure. I think helping somebody and being a servant for sure. That's dope. I love that. Yeah. You got anything else for me? You was quiet. You had all the questions, uh, man. No. You were supposed to have the questions. <laughs> all right. Well, uh, that concludes today's episode. Thank yeah. you all for joining us. If you enjoyed today's episode and you got some type of inspiration from watching or listening, then go ahead and tap that like button, share with a couple friends, turn on the notifications to keep up with our latest content. Follow us on YouTube and TikTok at Talk of the Town Podcast with two T's at the end and on Instagram at T-O-F-T-T -T underscore podcast. Brown, what's your what's your handle? What's your uh, OBJ Blake, uh, OBJ underscore Blake. There's only two OBJs, OBJ and then me. Right. Um, and then uh, shit, I just be on Instagram. I mean, I got a Twitter and stuff, but I don't really be on social media like that. So, gotcha. you know, um, yeah, follow that. Run that up though, for sure. All right, <laughs> appreciate you, bro. Yes, sir, man. Thank uh. you guys for having me. Uh, flowers and caps off to you guys for the movement that you're doing, Queen. Appreciate yeah. you. Thank you. Uh, you know, and uh, best of luck to you guys and, and hope this thing gets pushing, man. I'm glad I was able to start it off with yeah, you guys, man. Yeah, yeah. You know, so thank you for giving me the opportunity, bro, for real. Yeah, you already know what Yeah, you know that. Yeah. You know that. I got something to play for you, man. You say you're fit at a You just broke your leg, are you injured? <laughs> Yo, this guy is classic, bro. <laughs> that's, in, that's in Italian, by the way. Nah, you gotta be like, buongiorno, buongiorno. That's, that's French. No, that's Italian. Oh, my God. <laughs> Buonasera, buongiorno. Grazie, ciao. Grazie, ciao. Yeah. yeah.